everybody, Susie Q here and welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. And today I want to introduce you to our five-year-old macaw, a severe macaw, and her name is Sophie. We've had Sophie for a month now. So I know it's only been a month and it takes a very long time to build trust with a bird, but let me show you what we've done so far. My John, my fiance John, his brother had a macaw that he um, was having a hard time with because of all the dogs. He, thought, he was thinking about rehoming her and I knew John and I had been looking into birds for a while now. So as we were researching birds, we would visit the exotic bird store and there were people there that were interacting with their birds. Their birds were still being hand fed and the store doesn't turn them over its owner until they're eating on their own. As, as this young woman was sitting on she let me interact with her birds. Have no confidence whatsoever, scared to death, but she was walking me through and how cute it was and I was loving every minute of it. Even as she grabbed onto my skin and I was giving her back, I was still absolutely enjoying this and I knew that this was gonna work out. I just, I have to get a tougher skin and I would have to learn how to be a parrot mom more than her need to be trained. Well, probably a little bit of both. So that was fun. That's weird. That's okay. When they bite, you can just wave your arm a little bit. They'll have to balance themselves. Okay. So they're gonna stop biting you to balance yeah. themselves. I offered our home and they talked about it. So when we decided that we're gonna do it, his brother didn't have second thoughts, but he was very attached to the bird, but he wanted to do right by the bird and rehome her but for the same fact that he loved the bird very much. So it was very hard for him to give him up. So when he decided, he had been trying for a couple weeks, at one, at one point he said, come on, get, come get her. So as soon as he decided that we can come get her, it happened to Ben, it was seven o'clock at night, so we came right over and got her. He gave us this beautiful cage that she'd been used to, all the toys inside, a scale, all the food that she's been eating, and we'll get into all that. And so we packed everybody up and I let them put Sophie in the carrier. So as you can see here, this is a carrier about yay big. I bring it out, but it, I don't want to stress her more than I need to. So it's a carrier about this big. And she stayed in the carrier and rode in the front seat of the cab with us while the cage went in the back. As soon as we got home, I put her, I put her on a table while we power washed the cage. While John was power washing the cage, I was getting my room ready for the cage. We're going to put her in the corner and out in the living room was going to be the play area that every time she came out she was going to be in the play area. A little bit of a snafu though. The cage didn't fit through the doorway. We took off the frame of the doorway and it was still about, it was just this much too big. So we decided to put the cage out here in the living room. It wasn't planned so I was trying to move things around. This is the best place we had at the moment. And then I realized after we put it here, it's probably the best spot for her because it's got the most traffic. Everybody who comes in the house says hello to Sophie. <laughs> I love you. Sophie, Sophie. Everybody who leaves, goodbye to Sophie. We added her toys back in after, because all her toys were washed as well. Put the cage together. And we started our bonding, and we have to build trust. So this is gonna take some time. Hello. There's two different ways that we've been building trust and getting to know Sophie. I've been doing it one way and my daughter's boyfriend, John, has been doing it his way. Now he worked third shift, so he was coming over every night, talking with Sophie, bonding with Sophie. Ow, that still hurts. No, nice, easy, easy. He was a little taller, so he was so he worked with Sophie every night in his way. 
he was a little sturdy, a little right. more less afraid, less timid, and worked with Sophie every night. His style was a little different, and she she started trusting him more and more. Come on. Come on. Oh, there we go. Get the love in. Get the love in. That's what you need. I get it. Good girl. You wanna say cheese? I work with Sophie every day coming home. So when I came home, my style was a little different. I came home and I interacted with her every day. The first week, I tried to build trust every day with her without using my hands at all. I would put toys up there for her. I would talk to her every morning and every evening. I would sit next to her cage and either reading a book or working on my videos, editing, talking to her the whole time, and of course watching bird videos, which I could see her demeanor change when she heard other birds on the video, which was pretty cool. So all the suggestions that they were giving, I didn't know how to do yet. I didn't know how to remove her from her cage. She's fully flighted. So a couple times she got scared and flew around and when she landed on the ground she was more than willing to step up so I could put her back. Other than that she really didn't want to step up. She wanted to uh, bite and could it have been because she's using her beak to step on me to see if I was sturdy. I know I still had a lot more trust building to do and she needed to build a little more trust with me. So we're working on it. We're working on it. So I can't really remove her from her cage to go to the play area because she just now is starting to step up on me. But I can't move my arm because she goes right back. And even the couple steps that I move, she'll fly back. So whatever I do, I can't get her over. But I've tried some different things. Now I don't have a play area for her. I don't have a separate perch. So I started investigating different ways I could maybe make a perch for her. And I kind of wanted it on wheels so I could move it but lock it so it's sturdy. So I saw the shopping cart across the street, my neighbor's trash. I was going to use that. And I thought, no, because then I'll just end up with a shopping cart in my yard. Scrap that idea. Then I thought, I have a couple different items that might work. At first I thought this light would work. But I really need my light, so that's not going to work. Then I have a stand for a symbol. But that's not going to work because it's got a foot pedal and it's very heavy and awkward and I didn't know how to turn that in. So then I found this wooden quilt rack. I thought that's perfect. It's got two little perches on it. It might be a little low to the ground. So then I bought a piece of java wood to go on top. And I added some toys. But the problem is I couldn't get her on. We're nowhere near that stage. So I put the quilt rack right next to the cage and use that as her treat station. So she did come down and stand on the quilt rack to get her pistachio and she ran back up. Then I created this PVC stand. Um, I used a three quarter inch PVC stand to, to try to create a perch, but I still am in the same situation. I can't get her to sit on the perch. I can't get her to the perch. I got her to step up, and as soon as I went lower to put her on the perch, she flew back up. So that didn't work. Um, there are times I'm sitting on the couch, and she'll just slide down, walk over onto the couch, and come up on my shoulder. But that's only happened a couple times so far. Right, baby? Right, baby? And um, I've seen her bite some people, so I don't really turn and look at her. Because I'm not sure if that eye to eye contact, I don't want her to think I'm being aggressive. I want her to trust me. So it's been a slow process. It has been an absolute slow process and it's just the beginning. So now I'm doing a little bit more target training. The problem is the only treat I can get her to eat, which is the only thing she will eat, is pistachios. And they take a long time, a well, long time, 15 seconds. Maybe 15 sec, 15, 20 seconds to eat in between the trick. And the target training trick right now is just to touch the end of the stick. As soon as she touches the end of the stick, I click as I give her a treat. So she knows now that if she touches the end of the stick, she'll hear that click and get a treat. Then I start moving the stick 
about eight inches away, she walks eight inches to touch the stick to get a treat. So she's catching on that way. The problem is I'm still using the pistachios. And I thought maybe crushed up pistachios would be smaller, but I don't know how she is with small things in my hands because she's still quite bitey. And I don't know if it's because she's hormonal or we're still building trust. So I can see that this is working in the right direction. It's just going to take time. Two different kinds of building trust, two different things. She was walking on Colleen's John Long before she stepped up on me. I think I need some more training. That's what I think. I think I need to be trained on how to be a, a parrot mom. Don't I, babe? I gotta tell you, I'm absolutely loving. Loving Sophie. She's usually very quiet because we're in here interacting with her. When it's time for bed, I want to say that too loud, when it's time to go night night. Mm. She acts just like a two-year-old, let me tell you. She doesn't want to go to bed. She doesn't want to go in there. She doesn't want me covering. She pulls out the strangest noises ever just to stop me from covering her up. But once she's covered up, she's quiet. So there's so much that I want to go over with you, what I'm learning as I'm learning it. And, I, and the progress, I want to track our progress. More about her cage. The training that I've been doing with her. And I use that term very loosely. Her lighting, her food. I'm going to get her to go into all that. How I'm getting get her to eat healthy food. I've got organic pellets and a chopped salad. And she's not eating any of it. Yet. And then we started to notice there was some strange behavior. I wasn't sure what it was. I wasn't sure if she was sick. I went to the store and asked because she was making these strange pecking motions. And looked like... She was going through neck convulsions. Come to find out she was regurgitating and she was very hormonal. And they warned us about being in the fall and in the spring birth get hormonal. So a part of being hormonal, some of the things that were suggested that we could do to slow down or simmer down, the hormonal part was to make sure she got a good 12 to 14 hours of darkness sleep, eating healthy diet, not living and playing and being in her cage 24 seven. And if she started doing hormonal things, stop those behaviors. It's not cool. So we stopped what we're doing. So I thought that was very interesting. And I was very willing to make those changes. The problem is she's a little spoiled. Sophie has been pretty much brought up on seeds and nuts. Or because she prefers pistachios, that's all she was being fed the last couple of years. They tried a lot of foods. They gave us a lot of food. She doesn't eat anything but the pistachios. And what I'm being told is she is like the temperament of a two-year-old or the emotional stability of a two-year-old but the intelligence of like a five-year-old. I can see the intelligence of a five-year-old. She is very smart. But now I need to start getting her... Hi baby, what are you doing? I need to start getting her on healthy food. So I, even though I make her a chop every morning, which is technically it's the salad, the same salads that I give my tortoises and bearded dragons, but hers is chopped up real tiny. And I give her about two or three tablespoons. Um, I've been using pistachios as for treats. And the lady at the store said, as long as I'm giving her pistachios for treats, she may not switch over. You might want to put a little crushed pistachio in her chop in the morning. So that as she's picking out the pistachios, she's getting a flavor for all these different kinds of foods. But I got to tell you, it's only been a month. Already I am absolutely in love with Sophie. She is a doll and I think we're going to make it. What about you, baby? Do you think we're going to make it? All right, well, thanks for coming out and checking out my new Severe Macaw, Sophie. And I will see you next time. Say bye-bye, Sophie.